everybody and welcome to the flute practice. Today we are going to be talking about intonation. Yep, that scary thing that every one of us has to contend with at some point or another. So let's go check it out. So the first thing I'm going to talk about are the factors that influence intonation and this is really important because you know we can be doing all the right things but if these factors aren't kind of like taken care of we can kind of stand on our heads we aren't going to be out of tune the first thing of course is where the head joint position is over here the further out we pull the head joint the flatter we're going to get the more in we go the sharper we're going to get many of you are like duh i know this just covering bases here making sure we're all on the same page so Generally, we want to have the head joint out about half an inch. That's usually more or less where it should be in tune. But I'm going to encourage you guys, take a tuner and check your head joint position. Check where your A should be around 440, 442, depending where in the world you're playing changes. I've actually marked mine. You can see there with a little bit of nail polish as well. So I have got, and I've got this nice kind of black line that's not actually meant to be there, but it's there. Special special part of my flute I have no idea when I bought the thing it, it it started forming it shows me where my position is more or less and I'm quite comfortable knowing more or less what my position is so that's the first thing do you know and are you sure you know exactly where your head joint is positioned just as a little kind of like tester I'm going to show you if I throw this thing really far out like this and I'm going to play two C's so I'm low C that's supposed to be an octave that's supposed to be the same note, but an octave. Let me just push it in again and give you guys a listen. So that that's how it should be. So you can you can hear if the head joint is not in the right position, the proportions on the flute don't make sense anymore. So that's your first thing to check. Now your head joint position can be in the good right place. You always put it in, but there is another thing that really influences this, and that is the temperature. If it is freezing cold, your flute is going to be very flat. So, you know, your teachers always tell you warm up, warm up your instruments. This is really a lot of truth to this. You really need to have your flute at room temperature when you play it and when you tune it. Otherwise, you're going to have a big problem because it's going to be very flat. Likewise, as it warms up, it gets sharper and sharper and sharper. So you also need to be aware of the fact that when you start playing, invariably your flute may go a bit sharper, especially if it's very cold in the space you're playing in. What I like to do is I like to kind of hold all the keys down, including the C key, and I very slowly, not fast, because then you just kind of blowing cold air into the flute actually, um, and also makes a noise, but rather very slowly just blowing some air right down that pipe and just letting that warm up. And when I'm waiting to play a concert, you know, often school concerts or whatever it might be, or you're sitting in band, please make sure that you are holding around the neck here of your flute to keep it to help keep it a bit warmer. It really does help. Another thing that can really affect your intonation is the head joint cork position. We did a whole video on this last week, so I'm not going to get into detail with this. I'm going to encourage you go check that out. I'm going to link you to that and go and look at that. But make sure that your cork position is also in the right place. Otherwise, you're going to have trouble. Okay, so those are the kind of like starting places of intonation. You need to make sure those things are in tune and right before you even dive into this crazy world. What I'm going to first talk about is how do we make a note flatter and how do we make a note sharper? Basically what we want to do, there are a few factors involved here. Rolling the flute in and out. So if I roll in, if I roll out, so if I roll it in, it goes down. If I roll it out, it goes up. The other thing I can do is I can tighten or relax the embouchure. You can hear that also changes the, the intonation. What we can also think about doing is moving the jaw. I'm going to just turn for this a little bit, moving the jaw backwards and forwards. Which kind of goes hand in hand with the embouchure shape and position and tightness. I'm, I'm very reluctant to use the word tightness in the embouchure because I don't even think about tightening the embouchure for, for changing intonation, really. So moving that jaw backwards and forwards will move the pitch up and down. So if you move the jaw back, you get a flatter note. If you move it forward, you get a sharper note. The other thing that's very, very nice and useful for the, for the intonation is the head position. So just 
dropping the, the head slightly has a similar effect like rolling the flute in and out in a way because you're just getting that airstream to change. The last thing that I really believe helps your intonation is your support. So something we often neglect. But really, if I drop my support, and if I play with support, of course, everything is so connected. So like often I will let go of my embouchure a little bit when I drop my support and I will even drop my head perhaps a little bit. So it's all so connected, which makes it a challenge. A really great exercise to practice for intonation is the note bending exercises. So now we're kind of combining all three of these things in one. So we are rolling in the flute, we are dropping the jaw, loosening the embouchure slightly and dropping the head ever so slightly. And it's kind of this play of this kind of all three working at the same time to just kind of lower that airstream and help it down without losing the sound completely. Then we do the opposite, we go up, so we bring the jaw forward, we turn out, we lift the chin very slightly, and we're going to move the embouchure a little bit tighter, moving it up. This is a really important exercise for this. So guys, before we even go into when you need to adjust intonation, I want you just to focus on this what we call suppleness of the embouchure and really getting this feeling of moving that embouchure and being able to move the embouchure. Now, the real kind of problem on the flute. The flute is hideously out of tune, like a lot of the time. And there are some times that it's more out of tune than other times. And we're just going to check you through those times so that you know when to adjust to intonation. We're going to get to exercises at the end of this video on how to practice intonation. So right now I'm just kind of flashing through the highlights of the tricky registers. Firstly, when you play softly, the intonation is usually going to be flat. Piano or pianissimo playing on the flute is usually associated with flat playing. On the other hand, forte playing, loud playing, is usually associated with being too sharp. Usually we get that kind of overblown sound. Then, usually the high register on the flute is sharp hideously sharp with one exception there is one exception and that is high b flat is usually a bit flat there's two exceptions actually d although it's not really that high but d is also usually quite flat hopefully you can kind of hear the b flat tends to be flatter than that b natural is like way out there sharp so high register really sharp most of the time Low register is usually flat most of the time, so we really have to think forward, bringing it all forward there. Low register is anyway quite soft and weak, and it's flat. High register we know is strong and powerful and needs a lot of air and is just usually sharp. There are some special notes on the flute that are just famously and hideously out of tune. We've spoken about B flat, that high B flat, and we've spoken about D, which especially when you play D piano, you really have to get that pitch up. So we're talking about the third octave D. If I do nothing, you can hear it's quite flat. One of the most famously out of tune notes on the flute by far is that C sharp or D flat. This is a nasty note and it really needs special attention. So C sharp without anything is quite airy, is quite breathy and is quite horrible. So what we really have to think about on that C sharp is quite nasally. I used to have a teacher who used to always hold my nose closed like this on the C sharp. But there's good kind of sense in that because I'm going to try this actually. I'm going to just play the C sharp. <laughs> it really does lower the pitch, which is amazing. I'm like, I don't know why it works, but it does. So we want to think of that same kind of, I also think like a tenor. They often have, well, I don't know, this might be a bit rude. If any of you are tenors, I'm sorry. But sometimes some tenors have quite sort of a nasally kind of a voice, which can be really beautiful. No, that's not a bad, it's not a value statement, just putting it out there. But we need to think a little bit like that. So I'm thinking, often I'm thinking a little bit back with my head as well. I'm thinking, mm, do, do. I'm thinking quite sort of like nasally, if that makes any sense. Basically, you want to get that airstream down. You want to, um, I, I actually sort of focus the embouchure a little bit more here as well, just to make it a little bit less airy, kind of focus that embouchure. 
if you're finding your C-sharps are really bad and out of tune, you want to just spend some time kind of working with them and shaping them and kind of molding them a little bit and finding a better sound for them. Now, every flute has got its little kind of like nasty bits and moments. So you have to be very aware and kind of in touch with your instrument. I want to say in tune with your instrument, but that's a terrible pun, although I'm still going to make it. Got to be in tune with your instruments, guys. <laughs> in all seriousness, you need to kind of figure out where the problem areas are. Some nice exercises to practice intonation. One of my absolute favorite ones is to actually get a friend. <laughs> get a friend. Seriously, get a flute friend and practice. And what you do is you both play a G. And then the one friend will hold that G and the other friend will jump up to the octave. really spend time in that high octave really finding the intonation and then coming down this is a fantastic exercise you can do this with other intervals as well so you can do the octaves then you can do the thirds which are great you can do fifths you can even go sevenths in this way it's quite brave but it's great if you've got an even bigger group of flutes maybe you've got like four of you you can start doing full chords which is so cool and so much fun and really useful if you're a band if you're in a band take your flute section say hey guys we are going to practice some chords and intonation today I do this with my students at times and it's really, really good and useful. If you don't have any friends, first of all, I'm sorry. No, I'm joking. If you don't have any players around you that can play with you, what I'm going to recommend is you can take a piano or a tuner that has kind of like a foundation tone. I'm not a huge fan of that kind of like computer generated sound at all. So I prefer to do this on a piano. So what I do is I hold a note down on the piano. I push the note and I hold the pedal down. And while I'm doing this, I will um, play the note and I will tune the octave with that note. What I generally don't do when I'm practicing this is I generally don't practice like a whole scale and make sure that it's all in tune with the tuner because a tuner is not really like properly in tune. And what I mean by this, it's in tune to a piano. The piano is also out of tune, by the way. <laughs> we will get into that. But basically, there is a difference between what we call the equal temperament, which is where all those little semitones are the same, and pure tuning, which is how the flute really is built, where the intervals aren't all exactly the same. It's, it's a little bit confusing. It's got to do with properties of sound. If you are a beginner and you know, you're just going to stick with your tuner and get your notes in tune, that's fine. It's not the end of the world. We are talking maybe a little bit more refined intonation here, but it's really worth your while to spend some time finding that, that nice intonation. A thing that you can do with your tuner though, a really great exercise, is you can play your low G, find your low G, and then jump your octave to the high G and check that the tuner is showing that both of them are in tune. This is very good for that high register. I do this sometimes, especially like before orchestral gigs and stuff, is to just check your high registers like that. You will see how sharp they are. <laughs> it's horrifying and you really have to get that air down into the flute and you really kind of have to do everything you can to get that, that air direction down. It's a challenge. It's a wonderful challenge. All right, guys, that was a kind of overview of intonation. This is such a rich topic and we can go into such incredible detail here which perhaps we will go into more detail as we go along. But for now, this is kind of the basics of the flute intonation. I hope it's helpful. Stay in tune, guys. Stay in tune with yourselves and with your instruments and with you know the rest of your band. Happy practicing and see you soon.